Hi everyone, welcome to our first webinar. Um, we're gonna get started here in just a moment, uh, but before we begin, I just wanted to take a moment and confirm that you can all hear me speaking and you can see my screen. You should see the cover slide um, that says Give Big St. Croix Valley and Getting Started. Um, so if you're able to see that, just go ahead and put a yes into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel. And don't be shy. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to make sure that I wasn't talking to no one. And I'm just going to put myself on mute for just another second, and then we will go ahead and get started. Okay, so that literally was a second because uh, it's the top of the hour now. So welcome to our first webinar for uh, 2021's uh, Give Big St. Croix Valley. This is our Getting Started webinar. And my name is Linda Gerhardt. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. And I think this is my fourth or fifth year probably my fourth year with Give Big St. Croix Valley. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with the United Way St. Croix Valley um, on this event for several years now. So I'm very familiar with your event. If you've attended our webinars before, you've probably heard me speak. Um, and I'm also joined by Lisa Murphy, who's taken over the reins of Give Big St. Croix Valley. Hi, Lisa. Hi. All right, so we're just gonna get right into it. Um, the basics uh, are what we're gonna start out with today. And then we're gonna go um, into the things that you need to do as a participant to get ready for Give Big St. Croix Valley. And then Lisa and I will be doing a live Q&A at the end of the presentation. Um, so if you have a question while I'm presenting, um, just go ahead and uh, put that question into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll make sure that we have time to get to it at the end of the webinar. And with that, I wanna just start off with the basics. Um, so basically, what is Give Big St. Croix Valley? What is it all about? And what do you need to do as a nonprofit? Um, so at first, I wanted to turn things over to Lisa, just to uh, give you the, the basics from the United Way perspective. Okay, thank you, Linda. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Uh, overview of Give Big. Um, it is a 24-hour day of giving that takes place every year on the last day of last Tuesday of April. This year it will take place on April 27th. All of the information that you need to know about Give Big is at the website listed here. And you'll see there too that we are hosted by United Way St. Croix Valley, um, program of St United Way St. Croix Valley. Uh, every year, early big giving for Give Big starts on April 1st. So if organizations have already registered. Uh, many of you are registered already. We're at about 55 organizations now. And a lot of you are getting your pages ready to, to launch on April 1st and even take some of those early donations. Uh, Give Big is open to all 501c3 organizations and schools. And uh, registration is required, of course, even if you've registered in the past. And I know Linda's going to talk about that more. There is a $100 registration fee for each organization to participate, and you are able to pay that either right when you sign up for Give Big. Um, otherwise, we also have organizations that go ahead and register and send us a check in the mail um, afterwards. So whatever works for your organization. I'll just turn it back over to Linda now. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, so the, after that introduction of Give, Give Big St. Croix Valley, I really wanted to pull back and really talk about what giving days are and what their purpose is. Um, so giving days are basically 24-hour online giving marathons. Um, and oh, I missed this slide. They're 24-hour yeah, they're online giving marathons. And their goal is to really bring together communities, organizations, and community members and rally them together for causes that are doing important important work right in their backyards. Um, a giving event has a host, which in this case is the United Way St. Croix Valley, um, and they are the people who bring together the nonprofits, they do publicity, they provide trainings, and they work with the organizations who are participating. Um, and Giving Days also have a platform, which in this case is Mighty Cause, the company that I work for. Um, and basically our online giving platform is specially built to handle uh, high volume days like giving events. So they're really big days. There's a lot of transactions happening all at one time. And our uh, giving day product on Mighty Cause is specifically designed to handle all of that traffic and all of that volume. Um, so we work with the United uh, Way of St. Croix Valley and we basically 
put together the website and make the giving event happen. Um, and giving events are really, they run on two different things, uh, community spirit and some friendly competition, which can seem kind of opposed to each other, um, but they really do work together to create a magical day. Um, you have leaderboards and golden tickets that you'll be competing for to win prizes. So those go to organizations who um, you know, either fundraise well during an hour or overall, and uh, you'll see the prize list as we get closer to the event. Um, and they also work to spread awareness of your mission and work, um, especially with community-centric giving events like Give Big, um, you have the opportunity to find new donors, new people to invest in your cause. So you get some additional exposure um, and a boost from participating in a giving event. Um, and then you're all working collectively to raise money for the event and for your individual causes. Um, so you're working toward a, a collective goal. You're trying to show um, you know, support for all of the nonprofits doing incredible work in St. Croix Valley. Um, but you're also working toward an individual goal at your organization. Um, and the best thing about giving days, in my opinion, is that they're a really great opportunity to engage sponsors and community partners, as well as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. So there's a lot of opportunity for different kinds of engagement with different demographics. Um, and the most important question is, what do you need to do to participate? Especially if this is your first year, this may be at the top of your mind. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the specific things that you need to do. Um, but basically, you just need to register to participate. Um, and then you need to create and customize your profile on the Mighty Cause platform, because that's going to represent you do it during Give Big. Um, and then you need to plan a fundraising campaign. Uh, so decide upon a goal and set up your page, promote your campaign via social media email and events and however you choose to and then also you can consider inviting your biggest supporters uh, to participate as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to give you an additional boost and then on um, April 27th you just need to raise money for your cause um, so it's really pretty simple and we're going to talk about some of the um, things you need to do just to get yourself ready for um, when early donations open up on April 1st. Um, so yeah, what do you need to do to get yourself prepared for Give Big St. Croix Valley? Uh, the first thing, as Lisa mentioned, is registering your nonprofit. Um, it's a really simple form. You just go to the website and click register. Um, if this is your first year with Give Big, you may have a few additional steps. You may need to use your EIN or your organization's name to find your nonprofit, or if you're fiscally sponsored and you're not, or you're not finding your organization in our list because you're not in our database, you may just need to fill out an additional form so that our support team can create a page for you. Um, but if you've participated in the past, once you're logged in to uh, the Give Big website, you'll be able to easily select your nonprofit. It's a pretty short form, and we do just need everybody to register again, even if you've registered before, because we want to know that you're intending to participate this year. Um, Lisa had mentioned the registration fee. You should see the link for that after you submit your registration. Um, and then once you're um, added to the event, you can add additional administrators. So if you have anybody at your nonprofit, any volunteer, Volunteers who need access to your Mighty Cause profile, you can grant them that access. Um, and then there are some dashboard changes for those of you who are Give Big veterans, um, but that's one of the first things you'll want to do is orient yourself to the Mighty Cause dashboard because this is what you're going to be using um, as you prepare for Give Big and on the day itself to sort of keep track of your efforts and keep track of your donors. Um, so this is basically how it's set up. This is different from last year. We've made some changes because we're always tweaking the dashboard to be more useful, um, but your overview screen um, gives you a quick look at your most important metrics since you last logged in, and that has recently changed. So there's actually some really cool things you can do there, like you can add um, you know, things that you wish to track, like your donor retention rate. You can customize the date. So if you wanted to be able to easily pull what your donor retention rate was for last year's Give Big and see if you can boost it this year, you can actually use your over screen overview screen to do that. And you'll also be able to check in on the status of your registration. So for instance, if uh, you just registered and you haven't yet uh, had your registration accepted, then you'll be able to see that your registration is pending. So it's just a screen where you can check in and see what's new and different on your um, 
on your on your with your account and with GiveBigs since you last logged in. Um, the fundraising section of your dashboard is where you'll find pretty much all of the tools that you'll be using to create your campaign. Um, so this is where you can access your profile, you can edit it, um, you can find your different campaigns. Uh, you do have a screen where if you've done you know peer to peer fundraisers in the past or events for GiveBig, you can actually hide those or get rid of them if you don't want them to appear in the search. Um, and you can also customize your channel checkout flow, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, and then reports. Reports are a really important piece of your dashboard and your Mighty Cause profile, especially as the event ends and you're looking to send out your thank yous and account for all of the donations you received. Um, you have a donation report um, and you have a donor retention report, which we're going to talk about in a bit so that you can actually reach out more easily to those donors who gave uh, last year but haven't given yet this year. And then finally, you have you have your settings. Um, those are really important to check in with year after year. Make sure that your EFT is still up to date or set that up if you haven't already set that up. Uh, it's always a great opportunity to do some spring cleaning and if you have some admins who are um, on your account that maybe don't need access anymore or you need to give access to somebody new, you can do that in your settings. And of course, if any legal information has changed, your address or anything like that, you can go in and change that information so that it's up to date. Um, and then the first thing you'll want to do is customize your profile. Um, if this is your first year and you kind of have a blank profile, you'll, you'll have a little bit more to do. Um, and if you're uh, just checking in because you have been participating in Give Big for years, then you'll just want to check in and just make sure everything is up to date. But this is going to be the main link that you share with your supporters. Um, so the URL to your uh, organization profile is what you'll want to share. That's where most people will be giving. Of course, you can have campaigns connected to it, but this is the main page that supports you during Give Big. Um, and this is also your opportunity to tell your organization's story. So when a new uh, donor finds you through the search and they're interested in your cause, this is your opportunity to talk about the work that you do and why they should support your organization. Um, and we do actually have a to-do list that you can complete. Um, it basically measures the um, how, how many items you've completed to um, make your profile as robust as it can be. So once you complete your to-do list, um, um, there are, I believe, five items on that. Um, then your profile is deemed complete and, you know, it looks good for the people who come to your page because, you know, if people see a blank empty page or there's not much on it or it's out of date, people might not feel comfortable giving. So you really want to customize your profile and show it a little love. Um, your theme is what kind of controls the look of your page. Um, you want to obviously update your logo or upload your logo. Um, that is used to represent you on leaderboards in the search. It's used all over the Give Big site. So make sure that your logo is uploaded or updated and looks how you want. Um, your banner image is what sits behind your logo. Um, and that just kind of personalizes your organization profile so that when people come to your page, they can be drawn in and maybe see something uh, that's similar that represents the work that you do um, and you can also choose your uh, uh, filter color and the strength for the background so if you have something that's really colorful and it kind of distracts from your logo uh, which should be the star of your organization page in terms of visuals um, you can put a filter over it so that it's a little bit more in the background um, and what's one thing I do want to point out is that you can set a theme color so if your organization has brand colors that you use you can actually set those um, in your uh, on your profile so that they're reflected and the page looks more like it's part of your brand um, and as I was just mentioning, your organization page is a great place to tell your story. Um, so go in there, make sure it's up to date. It's a simple inline editor. Um, you have a lot of options to uh, customize your, your story, adding links, lists, bullet lists, images. I've seen some people do some amazingly creative things with it. So go in here and make sure that it's up to date and it tells the story you want. And this can also be where you make your main campaign appeal. Um, so there's a lot of great things that you can do here to tell your story, make this um, more personalized and draw people in. The more time they spend on your, your organization profile, the more likely they are to actually make a donation to your cause. Um, so spend some time with your story and show it a little bit of love and uh, make sure that anything that's out of date is edited out of that because obviously you don't want references to your 2019 or your 2020 campaign in your story for 2021.
Um, you also have the ability to add media to your profile, which is really important. You can connect um, your Facebook galleries, your Instagram feed. Um, so that way it's really more of a dynamic space where you're importing the things that you're doing on other platforms. Um, Instagram can be a little bit tricky. So if you get any error messages related to Instagram, feel free to reach out to our support team. I'll share their email address and information at the end of the, the webinar. But you can import um, images from your Dropbox, your Google Drive. Uh, this is a really an opportunity to jazz up your page and tell a visual story about what your organization does. So it looks really great if you're able to uh, jazz this up and you know put your visuals on there and show visitors what it is that you do. Um, your checkout flow, this is a little bit more technical, um, but your checkout flow is really important. That's under the fundraising tab. Um, and you wanna revisit this from year to year. So basically this is where you can choose what donor data you would like to collect. So if there's something that's really important for you to know about your donors, you can opt into collecting that data. Um, something that's just a bullet point here, but is really important is custom donation suggestions and impact descriptions. So what you can do is you have four options um, for customizing suggested amounts. So um, by default, they're going to be 25, 50, 75, and 100. Um, but you can alter those so that they are custom to your organization. Um, and you can also add descriptions that gives people an idea of what that amount provides. So for instance, if this year is say your 10th anniversary, of your organization and you really want to do um, suggested doma donation amounts in tens, um, you could customize that and you can also add a description to say like, hey, if you, you know, donate $10 per month, that helps us feed X number of people at our food bank or whatever uh, the case may be. Those are really powerful and that connects donors or connects with donors at a moment that is critical. That's when they're deciding how much to give. So it's really vitally important that you check in with those um, and you can also preview your checkout process um, and go through that as a donor would without having to make a test donation um, which is really helpful to understand what that looks like for your donors um, because we, we provide support but sometimes they might call you if they have a problem um, so it's important to know what that looks like and sometimes you can find that unfortunately you created a cumbersome process and maybe you'll be able to trim some fat from that and make it a, an easier process for your donors to get through um, and something that's also really important, just a small bullet point here, but you can enable dedications and designations. So if you would like people to be able to dedicate their donation to someone or do something in honor or in memory of someone, because you print that in your newsletter, you can certainly add enable that here. Um, and if you have any funds that you would like people to be able to designate their donations for, you can also separately enable that in your checkout flow. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do in your checkout flow. So just make sure even if you've done this year after year, uh, just check in with your checkout flow and make sure that it looks how you want it to. So hidden in your checkout flow, um, there's a tab that says post checkout, um, and it's a really important tab. Uh, so one of the things that you want to do there is you want to edit your uh, thank you settings. So you have a thank you page, which will display after somebody completes their donation. And you can add a photo, a video, a customized CTA button if you would like, um, any links that you would like, and it just provides an immediate thank you and acknowledgement from your organization to the donor. Um, so make sure that you have your thank you page um, filled out. And this is a separate thing, it's the second thing that you'll see in the post checkout tab is a custom thank you message. Um, so when a, somebody makes a donation on Mighty Cause, um, we send them a receipt because all of the donations are processed through our donor advised fund, the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation, and that's so that we can take care of receipting for you. So we email them a receipt, but this is an opportunity to automate your acknowledgement of their donation with our receipt. So make sure that that's updated um, and this is also where people can sort of find old information hiding. Um, they'll, you know, get halfway through the giving day and go, oh my gosh, I have 2019 in this receipt. What's going on? Um, so it's always important to check on what's actually uh, written here so that you can make sure that you edit out any old information and make it relevant to your campaign this year. Um, and we do have the opportunity for you to preview the thank you experience um, so that you can see exactly what your donors are seeing. 
So this is kind of where all the action is at, um, at least from the admin side, is your donations and disbursements. Um, so every time somebody completes a donation on Mighty Cause, um, all of the admins for your organization will receive um, notifications letting them know that so-and-so made a donation. Um, my recommendation, and I see people do this for giving days all the time, do not use that to chat, track your donations throughout the day. You have a donation report that will synthesize all of that for you and make it much easier to read. Um, so sometimes people will try to piece together a donation report from the emails. Don't do that. We've already done it for you. Don't do any unnecessary work. Um, but you can access donor data in real time and you can export the report. Um, something that I do want to mention here is that when you go to your donation report on the screen, you're going to see limited information about um, your donors. You're going to see basically their name, how much they gave, um, and their email address. But if you want to get more detailed donation, like uh, their some, if you have source tracking for the donation, if you want their address, if you want any of the things that we collect, because there is a lot of data there, you just want to export your donation report and look at the CSV, because that's where you'll find the details. Um, and also you have a disbursement report. Um, so if you are getting your disbursements through direct deposit or check, um, you will see a report there that breaks down what donations are included in that um, disbursement. And you'll also see the breakdown of any fees. Um, we typically don't offer refunds, but sometimes you'll see a refund in there if somebody contacted us and said, whoops, I, almost, I accidentally donated twice. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, refunds in there, so it's always good to check your disbursement report because sometimes, um, you know, especially if you're getting them twice monthly, if you try to piece it together with your donation report, it may not make sense, but it's all there in your disbursement report. So make sure that you check that when you get that email from us letting you know that your disbursement was processed. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much your donation report. You're probably going to be spending a lot of time there and get very familiar uh, with your donation report and your disbursement report. So we're, we're gonna talk more about this in the strategy webinar, which is coming up later this month. Um, but matching grants is also an important thing to take a look at on your dashboard. Um, so a matching grant, grant is a very powerful fundraising tool that you can use to incentivize people to give to your organization when it matters for you. So sometimes organizations will have matching grants that last for the duration of the entire event. And sometimes uh, organizations will strategically use a match grant um, to draw people in during a golden ticket hour or to win a particular prize. Um, so there's a lot that you can do with matching grants. They're really cool. Um, and just to pull back a little bit and further explain that, a matching grant is basically a, a larger donation that your organization receives um, from a donor. Um, often sometimes from a board member or somebody who has a corporate relationship with your organization. Um, and you can enter that and we'll do all the calculations for for you so you don't have to calculate how much of the grant, grant has been met. Um, and there's always a lot of questions about this. It's a very complex tool. The important thing to know is that you do not have to have your donors pay the match or fulfill the match through the platform. Um, if you enter their email address, they will get an email letting them know that you've raised enough to uh, meet their match, to fulfill their match, and it gives them a link where they can make a payment. And that is helpful to you because only online donations will count toward prizes. But if somebody is giving you five grand or 10 grand, I can absolutely understand why they won't want to do that through um, an online platform and they may want to send a check. So you don't, you can always accept the check and you can enter an offline matching grant as well. It's really up to you, it's your choice. Um, and you can also choose to count the matching funds in your total amount raised. Um, by default, that will be the option. And you can also opt not to do that. So if you wanted to add the matching grant as one big offline donation, you can certainly do that as well. There's a lot of flexibility. Um, but if you do have, or if we're, re, we're counting your matching grant for you as part of your total, you don't need to add it to your page as an offline donation because basically when somebody makes a $20 donation and you have a one-to-one -one matching grant, we're going to basically 
add the twenty dollar that twenty dollars that is matched to your total for you so you don't need to add anything it's really the easiest thing to do if you have an offline matching grant so i hope that wasn't too confusing we're going to get more in depth about matching grants and how they work and how you can utilize them to boost your fundraising um, but it's a good idea to just take a look at the tool because there are some uh, techniques that are possible with this um, with this tool, like you can do a threshold match. So when you reach a certain amount raised, your match kicks in. There's a lot of really cool things you can do. So just take a look at matching grants, get familiar with the tool, get used to looking at it. And maybe it'll even give you some ideas for how you can use a matching grant this year. Um, so this isn't very exciting, but your settings are so important. Um, again, it's almost spring, uh, so it's a great time to do some spring cleaning and remove any admins who are no longer with your organization. Um, and of course, add anybody who needs to be added to your page. If you have you know, new staff members, a volunteer who's gonna be helping you out, um, you can manage your admins through your settings. Um, and as we talked about, you can update your legal address if any of that information has changed. Um, and you can set up EFT. Um, I definitely recommend if you are able to set up EFT doing it because you'll get your disbursements more frequently and sooner than a check. And as we all know, if you've been following the news, the mail can be a little bit slow. I think I got three Christmas cards at the end of January. Um, so if you wanna make sure that you get your disbursements um, in a timely manner, and aren't held up by the Postal Service, uh, make sure that you sign up for EFT. Um, and then we also have some social sharing settings that you can shoot, you can utilize that will control how your page looks when you share the link with people. Um, so you can add some meta tags, a meta description, and have a little bit more control over what your uh, social media uh, sharing link looks like. They all have a little bit of a preview. Um, so you can also manage that in your um, in your settings. So not very exciting, but they are important nonetheless. Um, and one thing I did want to call out this year as being very important, I don't know if we've done a ton of um, promotion for Give Big with this, but we do have a donation widget. Um, and that's under um, organization profile and then sharing and then embed options. Uh, we're look, working on making that a little bit more um, uh, front and center, but right now you can find it under uh, sharing and embed options. Um, and basically what our widget is, is a secure iframe um, embed that allows people to make donations to give big that count for the site. And I'm sorry, there's like a, a wrong, I didn't, I changed the, I didn't change the uh, give education from another webinar. I, I apologize for that. But you can, you can, um, pull in the Mighty Cause website and the Give Big website and capture donations on your website um, that will count for Give Big. So if you wanted to set up a specific page on your website where you're collecting donations for Give Big, you can do that with a donation widget. Um, it also will work in blogs. So if you um, blog at your organization, you can add the widget to your blog. Um, and you can set up recurring donations with the widget, which is really exciting. Um, obviously, recurring donations are really important for non Nonprofits, especially as we saw in 2020. Um, so you can embed the widget. I'd certainly recommend it, especially if you get a lot of traffic to your website. And you can, it just gives you an extra opportunity to capture donations and talk about your campaign. And it does pull in your uh, custom options from your checkout flow. So they'll see your um, su suggested donation amounts. Uh, they may not see the descriptions just because of space limitation, but they'll be able, we'll be pulling in all of your donation settings from uh, your your checkout flow. So you'll be you'll see those reflected in the widget. And then finally, uh, just take a look at the Give Big St. Croix Valley uh, resources. Lisa and the team at the United Way of St. Croix Valley have done lots of great work putting this together for you. Um, so we have timelines, tips, templates, um, really everything you need to make Give Big a success for your nonprofit. Um, and because Give Big is a, a, an event that has been with Mighty Cause for so long, these resources are really strong. They have been you know, improved on year after year. Um, so make sure that you're taking advantage of these. Um, we will also have, you know, you'll be able to sign up for the next webinar we have that is focused on strategy um, through the, the toolkit. And you'll be able to watch this um, recorded video um, and access the slides on the nonprofit toolkit. So if you have, you know, somebody that you're working with and you'd like to share the um, 
the webinar with them so that they can help you get started for Give Big. You can find that on the nonprofit toolkit. It will. It, YouTube takes a little while, so it'll probably be up tomorrow, but you can find it there um, basically in perpetuity. Um, and there's also FAQs. So if you have any questions about how something functions on Give Big, you can always check the FAQs. There's a lot of great information there um, that you can use to uh, answer donor questions as well as your own questions. And then finally, don't be afraid to reach out to our support team. Um, we are here to help you, um, and we will also have support on ready to, on deck basically for the entirety of Give Big from midnight to midnight. Somebody will be on and available to answer your questions. And obviously we're available to help you as you get set up. So don't be afraid to contact us. Um, the, you can email us at support at mightycause.com. Usually that is the quickest method. Um, and we do keep business hours. We are on Eastern time. So we are an hour ahead of, or, yeah, an hour ahead of you. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. We may not be in the office at like 6 or 7 p.m. our time. Um, and you can also give us a call. Our number is 202. 800-1618. Um, and we also have a really excellent support library that you can access at support.mightycause.com. Um, so sometimes that's the easiest place to find a quick answer if you're trying to do something and you can't quite figure out how to do it. Um, so we're here to support you. That is part of what our commitment is to give big. Um, so make sure that you don't feel afraid to reach out to us if you have any questions while you're setting up your page or even just wondering where you can access a certain tool. All right, so that is it uh, for the presentation. Um, I did wanna make sure that we have some time for questions, so I'm just gonna dive right in. It looks like there's only a couple, so if you have something that you'd like to ask me or Lisa, um, just go into your questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, um, and we will be here to, to take your questions. Um, so this is a question from Debbie. Um, will we get the slides emailed to us? Um, so that I don't know. Lisa might be able to speak to that. They will be available on the Give Big website in the nonprofit toolkit. Um, but Lisa, do you have a plan to uh, email them out to everybody, the recording and slides? I'd be happy to do that. So I'll, I'll send out, I'm, I'll be contacting um, the entire group this week. So as, as you're on my contact list, and I can also get a sign up list from you Linda and um, make sure that I reach everybody that's here today. Perfect. All right this is one from Kathy. Um, if you don't use EFT when will you receive the check from online donors and from whom does the check come? Um, so that's a great question. Um, if you aren't able to sign up for EFT um, the check is processed um, around the first of the month. So you'll be getting it sometime toward the beginning of the month. Um, that's when we process it. Um, when it gets to you is a little bit more of a question. You'll see it come in from the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. So don't throw away any mail that you get from the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. Uh, the address is Mariana, Florida. That is our admin address, even though we're all remote at this point. Um, so yeah, it'll come from the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. Um, and the address is Mariana, Florida. It's a PO box. Um, since we're all kind of scattered all over the United States. Um, and it'll usually get to you hopefully within a few weeks of being sent out at the beginning of the month. Um, just it, let us know if you are missing a check. Um, and you'll get a notification as soon as we process your disbursement. So what that means is that we'll notify you once we've processed it. So uh, keep your eyes out for that email uh, after the event. Let's see, this is another one from Kathy. Uh, can you review matching grants again? Um, so I don't wanna get too in the weeds because it's a little confusing and I wanna save some for the strategy uh, webinar that, that we're gonna do, I think in two weeks. Um, but basically a matching grant is a large donation that you leverage to bring in other donations. Um, and how you choose to do that is really between you and your grantor. Uh, most likely what we'll see is a one-to-one -one match, which means that um, let's say you have a thousand dollars from a generous donor and you wanna use that as a matching grant instead of just one donation. And you're kind of offering people a BOGO deal um, by saying, if you donate $25, we're going to match that. So it gives people the opportunity to uh, make their money go a little bit further, which who doesn't love that? I mean, I love a BOGO sale. So that's kind of what a matching grant is. And it works to entice people to make their donation now. Um, so that's why the timing of matching grants can be really important. Um, last year, I believe we um, had power hours. And I think we're going to have them this year. So for instance, if you wanted to use your $1,000 matching grant to get a lot of donations coming in, 
during a power hour, that gives you an advantage. So there's a lot of interesting ways you can use them. Um, but basically, at the end of the day, it's a large donation um, that you secure at your nonprofit, um, and you decide to leverage as a match to other donations that come in so that other people can get more for their money. Um, and you can use that strategically to boost your fundraising for Give Big. Um, and we have a tool that supports that. So all you have to do is give us the details of your, your match through the tool that we've provided, um, and we'll do all the math for you. Um, so it makes it very easy because sometimes these can be a little bit messy if you're kind of trying to manage them all on their own, uh, on, on your own. And this way you don't have to do any math and we will take care of counting it for you. Um, so that's what the matching grants tool is for. Um, and I will make sure that we cover that in the next webinar. So just make sure you sign up for that if you're interested in using a matching grant. Um, and just as one final note, if you aren't sure where to look for a matching grant, um, your board of directors is a great place to start um, since they're usually more than willing to pull together some funds to give you a matching grant. And that is one of their responsibilities to your organization is your financial health. Um, so hopefully they will be willing to talk about giving you a matching grant if the, the idea sounds a little strange and you're not quite sure where to start looking. All right. Um, so can literacy be added to the categories of a donor page? Um, so I think this is, um, this, so the, do, the categories on Mighty Cause and on Give Big um, are search categories. So unfortunately, we're not able to add you know, any specific categories um, because those are search filters. And frankly, that's code that I don't quite understand. Um, but basically, I would make sure that you're under education um, and go into detail on your profile about literacy. You can even try to add that to your display title so that people know that you're an organization that deals specifically with literacy just from finding you in the search. Um, but the search categories kind of are static just because they're global throughout the entire Mighty Cause site. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a good question for Lisa. Um, this is from Jody. Do you have the selfless selfies available yet? Um, I am updating them now in the process. Um, I likely will not have them up on the web page for another week, but they should be there um, not next week, but the following. I would check for them. And I'll also send out an email to the contact list when they're available and just let you know. Great, thank you. Um, oh, this is a great question from Ashley. When should we start posting on social media? Is there a specific summary or format that we should be posting on social media? Um, so I would say you wanna start gearing up closer to the time when you'll be able to accept donations. Um, so right now, if you post it on social media, you can basically say, hey, Give Big is happening and we're part of it, but your page is not actually able to accept donations that count for the event yet. That begins on April 1st. Um, so I would say maybe a week or so before April 1st, um, you can sort of ramp up your, um, you know, social media presence for Give Big. And definitely once April 1st rolls around, start posting about it a lot so that you can take an advantage of that early donation period. Um, but you don't want to post about it too early because at this point, donations toward your um, organization obviously they still count for your organization you will get that money but they don't count towards your give big total um, so in terms of um, like what what you should post um, I would just share a link share a link to your page um, that's the URL if you're using your organization profit profile that's just the URL at the top of the page you can copy and paste it um, and there's no specific format I believe the hashtag is hashtag give big SCV I think that's what's been the in the in previous years. I know that's somewhere on the Give Big site, um, but that way other people will be able to find you. For instance, on Twitter or Instagram, uh, that you're posting about Give Big St. Croix Valley. So I think that's hashtag Give Big SCV, um, but I'm not a hundred percent on that. So Lisa can. Yes, that's right. Lisa. Okay, <laughs> thanks. I'm Thank glad you. I got that one. 
um, but yeah, so you can use, you can add the hashtag so that people can find your posts a little bit more easily. And actually on the live page, we have um, a display of all of the posts that use that hashtag, which kind of makes the site look cool and people can find you on there. So definitely on the big day, use that hashtag. Um, but really just be creative, be engaging with your social media audience and include a link. Um, unfortunately, I see a lot of nonprofits forget that link. And if people can't figure out where to donate, sometimes they will make it up and donate through Facebook or who knows where. So just include a link and be engaging. And uh, yeah, that, there's also some really great templates in the nonprofit toolkit. So if you're kind of suffering from writer's block with social media, which I'm sure a lot of us are right about now, um, you can check the templates and there's also a schedule or a timeline that you can use there to give you an idea of sort of when you should start ramping up. Let's see, this is, um, a question from Karen, how do you get out of the dashboard and back to the actual page? Um, so right now, yeah, it's a little bit tricky and we're working on this internally. Um, so when April 1st comes around, uh, you will have the Give Big uh, logo on your like at the top of the page so you can easily get back to the Give Big website homepage. Um, right now you have to go back to givebigscv.org. Um, and I think you can also follow, if you go on your overview screen, you should be able to see like your registration was approved for Give Big St. Croix Valley. So you may be able to get there um, from there as well. So uh, I know that's a little bit tricky and convoluted at this point. We're working on that internally, so that's a little bit easier. Um, but either type in the URL or go to your overview screen and you should be able to see a link there that notes that you're participating. Um, but if you're still having issues, Karen, just reach out to support and we'll be happy to help you out. Um, let's see. Oh, this is actually a really good point. This is from Heather. Um, just a heads up for anyone who also does give men. Contact Mighty Cause after our giving day to make sure your profile shows up for give men too. That's a really fantastic point. So there's a lot of overlap between the Give Big St. Croix Valley um, participants and Give to the Max Day or Give Minnesota. And Give Minnesota has a a uh, year-round giving portal that they use. So we can only have you as part of one giving event as a time at a time because you know we can't split your donations from get between Give Men and Give Big St. Croix Valley, and that would not be to your benefit. Um, so if you are a participant in Give to the Max Day every year and you're on the Give Men portal um, and you have any redirect issues, you can contact us and certainly after Give Big St. Croix Valley, let us know that you'd like to be put back into to the give men search. Um, so we'll take care of that for you. But that's kind of like a tricky little thing that popped up because there's so much overlap between your organizations and organizations that participate in Give to the Max Day. Um, so yeah, that's a very great point. Thank you for mentioning that, Heather. I always forget about that. Um, let's see, there's a question from Jody. <clears throat> Pardon me. Will past donors receive an email when we put up a new update? This is something that used to get sent out, but it was removed a few years ago. Last year, I, to I was told that they may add it back this year. Um, so at this point, no, we don't have um, emails going out for an update. So you'll want to sort of manually email um, your donors. Um, and the reason for that is kind of tricky. Um, internally, there's really no good um, resolution to that because some organizations would post an update and they were testing something or they hadn't proofread it yet and they didn't expect for it to go out to all of their donors and they were horrified and our heart went out for them because that's a horrible mistake to make. Um, and so we kind of turned that off um, because most organizations didn't want that. But then some organizations are very good about using their updates. Um, but at this point, we are not emailing all of your donors through that updates tab. Um, so you'll want, you'll want to contact them directly through your email marketing software, whatever it is you use, um, or you know otherwise contact them off the platform. Um, just because we don't have that email functionality available right now. And I don't know if that's, I don't believe that's going to be added back in. Um, let's see, this is a question from Patricia. Um, what is the time frame for having donations count toward Give Big? Um, you mentioned early donations can start April 1st. When does it end? Um, that's a great question. So early donations are the period um, from April 1st to the start of um, Give Big on the 27th. So from the first 
to the 27th. That's the early donations period and all of those will count towards your give big totals. Um, and it, it ends after the event ends. So on midnight, on the, I guess it's the 28th, but like technically 11, 59, 59, 59 on April 27th, that's when the donation cutoff is. So after that point, um, we really don't count donations toward give big. So April 1st, through April 27th, or to April 27th, I should say, is your early giving period. And then donations end, um, obviously, when the giving event itself adds. All right, there's one more from Kathy. Um, on the give, on the main page of the Give Big site, some organizations show percentage of goal. Is that automatically added or does the admin have to make that happen? Um, so yeah, basically what that is, is you have um, the ability to control your page's metrics. And what I mean by that is your goal um, and the amount raised towards your goal, what you're counting toward that goal, and if you want to display the total amount raised and number of donors. Um, so on your page, when you if you go to your organization profile, you'll see a little pencil inside of a uh, circle, and you can edit that there. Just click into that, and you can change your goal. You can set it to zero. Um, the thing you'll want to change, especially if you had a goal set for last year, excuse me, is the date that you're counting from. Um, so you'll want to set it to April 1st, 2000 or 2021 um, so that it counts only donations that are um, applicable for this year's event and you don't have any old donations counting. Um, but yeah, there is actually a support article called um, Resetting Your Metrics that'll walk you through that process of making sure that those are reset for this year. Um, we are working on a way that we can sort of just flip a switch and do that for everybody, but we don't have that in place just yet. So you will have to go into your organization profile and edit those settings and make sure that they're only counting donations made from April 1st, 2020 this year. All right, so that was a lot of questions. Thank you guys for having so many great questions. Um, I think that is it for us for today. Um, if you have any additional questions, either for me or for Lisa, you can certainly um, contact us directly um, and if you have any more technical questions like you're having a hard time with something on your profile contact support at mightycause.com uh, support's actually been pretty light so far so you should get a quick answer to your question there um, and then lisa will go ahead and take care of uh well i will post the recording to the nonprofit toolkit along with the slides and she will take care of sending you the recording in the slides um, but that is it for us today um, happy fundraising i can't wait to see what you guys all do this year for gift big Thanks. Thank you, everyone.